I'm Mark Williams for PickupTrucks.com, and we're here at the 2013 Chicago Auto Show, where Toyota has just revealed the 2014 Tundra. A lot of changes on the exterior, a lot of changes on the interior. Let's start by taking a closer look right up front. The biggest changes you'll notice right up front, a brand new grille. This is the personality of the new truck. It's wider, it's taller, it's more chiseled. They want to give this new Tundra a more dominating stance and they start with the new grille on each of the five trim packages. SR, SR5, Limited, and two new luxury option packages, the Platinum and the 1794. Another key feature for designers, character lines on the side of the 2014 Tundra. Fender wells, side character lines through the doors, the lower balance, and especially over the front and rear wheels. They've made special definitions with the stampings and also included a brand new tailgate that incorporates a wind diffuser and a very cool embossed, almost billet stamp-like Tundra name on the back tailgate. As interesting as the new exterior is on the Tundra, the interior is where we think the biggest drama is happening. They've gone away from that bisected look that the Tundra started with, and they've gone to a more T-shaped, more conventional looking interior that is a huge improvement. Also, in the gauge cluster, huge improvement from the big barrels they used to have on the previous generation. We think this is gonna resonate much better with Toyota buyers and maybe a lot of new truck buyers in the segment as well. The other big news, two new luxury trim packages. One called the Platinum, a more classy, upscale, almost urban feel to it. The other, the 1794, which is a more western feel that should play very well throughout the Southwest. So there you have it. All new exterior, all new interior. The interior is probably the home run for us, but maybe the biggest part of the story here is what's not at this party. It's the same chassis and suspension, same set of powertrains, same cab configurations, we're going to take this as a first step in a very slow and methodical process from Toyota on improving this new Tundra. And that's okay, we're patient, we're willing to wait. But in order to play in this segment, which is getting very violent lately, they're going to need to step up their game once again. We expect that to happen maybe next year, maybe the year after. But until then, we'll see how this vehicle does against the competition in one of our future showdowns. For more information about this truck and the 2013 Chicago Auto Show, go to PickupTrucks.com.
I'm Colin Wood, the Director of Editorial for Autoguide.com. And I'm Mike Swears, Chief Engineer for Toyota Pickup Trucks. And we're here to answer your questions about the 2014 Tundra. Welcome everyone from Tundra Talk, Tundra Solutions, and the rest of the Autoguide Forum Network. My name is Colin Wood, and I'm the Editorial Director for Autoguide.com. Now, a lot of you have submitted questions to us, and we think we've put together something really special here with the help from our friends at Toyota. This is Mike Swears, and he's the chief engineer for the Toyota Tundra. He and I have looked over all of your questions, and he's going to answer them. Thanks, Colm, and I'd like to thank everybody who submitted questions. Uh, this is a really unique opportunity for us. With that said, some of the questions that came in were questions about future products, and I don't want to disappoint anybody, but I can't talk about future products. But we will uh, do our best to answer the questions that were submitted and uh, show you how great our truck is. Great. Let's get started. Let's go. The one question we got more than any other is, why didn't you put a new engine in a new truck? <laughs> the answer is simple. I have a kick-ass engine. I'm running double overhead cams, 32 valves. I was first to offer VVT in my engine. And some of our competitors are running push rods and they're introducing VVT. I've had it since 1999. Do I need to change my engine? I'm sure you're not surprised to hear that we got a lot of questions about fuel economy. So what is Toyota doing with the new Tundra to maximize those MPG numbers? You know, light weighting is an important place to, to start. And as we look at our powertrain, you know, I have aluminum head, I have aluminum engine block, I have aluminum transmission case, transfer case, uh, even aluminum prop shaft in the back. And we use a lot of high strength steel where we can use high strength steel to reduce mass as well. And we actually made some small change to our engine to improve its efficiency. Um, but we didn't change our horsepower or torque, so we don't really talk about it. We base our reputation on our quality, our durability, and our reliability. And that QDR is very important to us. Uh, that's our heritage. That's uh, our, really our truck history. And anything we do put into our powertrain or into our chassis, we want to make sure that it lives up to that heritage. One of the forum users had a really specific question. He wanted to know why you've chosen to use a two-piece drive shaft. That's a really good question. Uh, we chose to go to a two-piece drive shaft, as you see in our rolling chassis here. And the main reason is to change the breakover angle. So as you know, your transmission, your engine, uh, are set to allow proper uh, ground clearance to the front. And then, of course, your differential is really setting up your ground clearance in the rear, and they're, they're not on the same plane. So uh, whether you use a one-piece drive shaft or a two-piece drive shaft, you have to bridge from the transfer case back to the differential, and there's an angle there. By using a two-piece and, and putting the bearing in the center, we're able to reduce the amount of, of angle in the, in the intermediate shaft to the prop shaft back here, and that affects our breakover angle. So the angle between the, the two tires and how much ground clearance you have as you're going over uh, a log or a hill, items like this, it just gives us more ground clearance. They look like they're two different materials as well. Is there a reason? Oh, absolutely. So one of the things we found in the front of the uh, for our intermediate shaft is that when we went to aluminum, we had more NVH issues. So going back to steel, and we can balance the steel better, and for takeoff vibration, for riding vibration, uh, steel performs much better for us. A lot of forum members really want to know more about why you chose that particular type of frame and the reasoning behind it. I would love to talk about it. This is our triple tech frame. And uh, what's meant by triple tech is we have three different sections in our frame opposed to one box section or just running open sea. And the goal behind this is put the strength where the strength is necessary and take out mass where mass isn't necessary. And with our frame, you know, we have a closed box section up front where it's important for crash worthiness and also for rigidity of performance of the chassis itself. And then when we come back here, we have a reinforced open sea back here and again it's for making sure that the vehicle has the amount of frame flex in it that's necessary to to meet our off-road needs but also giving a improved ride quality and then going to an open sea in the back um, really having the open sea in the back is for ride quality so allowing that frame to flex allowing it to absorb the energy and the input road inputs uh, really helps that ride Okay. I mean, some of your competitors use full box frames, so why isn't Toyota doing that? Well, Toyota does. I mean, we have plenty of vehicles where we used a, a full box frame. But, you know, if you look at our frame that we have here on a half-ton truck, you know, and we talk about an open sea, it, it really is for ride comfort, so that you don't have that uh, 
old saying, it rides like a truck, right? If we look at our competitors, three quarter tons or one ton trucks, they run an open C. If we look at a class five or a class eight truck, they run an open C. Open C is a strong section, but it also gives it some uh, ability to flex and to roll and to absorb that road input so you have better ride quality overall. One forum member was asking, does the truck have a locker? And then someone else asked, does it have downhill assist control? That's a really good question. And as, we, as we've gone through and looked at things we can do to improve our truck, we investigated whether we should offer a locker on this truck. We insisted downhill uh, assist as well. And uh, we just didn't see a lot of support for these features, a lot of customer demands for these features. Now in our Tacoma model, we do offer both of those features and we do uh, have a lot of requests for that. Uh, the off-road, the demographics of that vehicle are much different than this full-size Tundra. One forum member wanted to know, why does the truck come with an electronic limited slip versus a true mechanical version? It really comes back to mass versus performance. We can offer a similar performance to a mechanical system without the mass of a mechanical system. Several of the forum members pointed out that the Tundra's tow rating isn't as high as many of its rivals. And they really wanted to know, is that just because Toyota's been too conservative when they rated the truck? Well, actually, we are the only manufacturer that's compliant with the new Society of Automotive Engineers towing standard. And what the standard says is that you have to be able to tow or maintain the mass of your trailer uh, during different obstacles. For example, one of them is going up Davis Dam. Davis Dam is a, a real life road. It's a steep grade that for a long climb and during 100 degree weather, with your full maximum load behind there and the air conditioning on, you have to maintain 40 miles an hour. We don't have any problem maintaining 40 miles an hour with our 5.7 liter engine. Some of the other manufacturers uh, have not complied with the standard, even though they were part of writing the standard. And uh, for us, this is about our customer safety. So our ratings, when we complied with that in 2011, went down a few hundred pounds. And uh, our competition's ratings would also go down if they complied with that standard. So we really think it's about truth in towing, it's about uh, the safety of our customers, and we want our customers to know what the truck can actually do for them. One forum member had a very particular question and wanted to know why he can't get a six and a half foot bed on a Crewmax truck. Yeah, actually, we offer a six and a half foot on our uh, double cab, and we offer an eight foot on our double cab. Uh, for our crew max, we stayed with a five and a half foot deck because we feel that uh, for maneuverability with a very large cab that we have, that this is the right size for the truck. The next question has to do with all this chrome up here in the front. One user asked, why is chrome so popular and can they get a maybe a color matched option instead? Yeah, we do offer two premium grades, a 1794, which is the year that the oldest ranch in Texas was established, and that's a ranch our plants on. And that's this one. That's this one. And, uh, you know, it's uh, based on a warm, natural material interior. And then we have our platinum. The platinum is all color keyed with color key bumpers, color key uh, grill, and rear bumper. And then we have a, a quilted black interior uh, with metallic trim. So both trucks uh, represent different lifestyles, different customer tastes, depending on what they desire. So Mike, several forum members actually asked about the seats in the Crew Max, the rear seats in particular, because the old truck had that recline and slide feature and that's gone now. Yeah, that's, that's a really painful uh, question for me to answer because I was responsible for seat design at the time that we offered that original slide and recline. And uh, when I became chief engineer, it was interesting because I started getting complaints from some of our current customers saying that they'd rather have a seat that tips up uh, similar to what our double cab has, a seat that actually will go up and lock into place so they have more storage space. So we sent out a survey and we asked our customer base, the current customer base for Crew Max, you know, what would you rather have? Would you rather have a slide and recline or do you want the seat to tip up and give you more storage space? And the painful part was 88% came back and told us that, no, we'd rather have a seat that tips up like double cab. And that reminded me of a, a conversation I had with Akio Toyota and, the uh, CEO of Toyota. Exactly. And, and he told me, you know, quit giving the customer what you think is cool and give the customer what they really want. And uh, so listening to the voice of the customer was really one of our themes for this whole redesign of the truck. 
So one forum member asked, why did you change the back seats in the Crew Max, and why did you get rid of the rear roll-down window? Well, actually, we didn't get rid of, rid of the roll-down window. The window still comes down on Crew Max, and the seat itself, uh, the seat back and the seat cushion, we didn't change the comfort of our cushion. We did change the feature of the cushion, but we didn't change the, the comfort. So the cushion thickness is uh, the same as our, our past slide and recline. In the back angle, we maintain 24 degrees, which is the same back angle you would have in a luxury sedan. So our goal was to keep best-in-class comfort for our rear seat, just offering a better utility in the rear seat. One forum member want to know, what have you done to improve the paint quality on the Tundra, and have you done anything else to help prevent rock chipping? We have. Uh, we changed the steel on the hood to an EG steel and changed the primer to better bond to that steel. So it allows us to have more flexibility of the paint and resist stone chipping from our past model. Another question submitted from our forums is, why isn't there a 120 volt outlet in the bed of the truck? Uh, we investigated putting 120 volt uh, connector back there. The difficulty with a full-size truck is the customer base is different, their needs are different than what we see with a compact truck like Tacoma. So Tacoma we do have 120 volt outlet in the back, but the amount of wattage we can put out for a full-size customer's needs uh, would really uh, require a huge inverter in the vehicle and it has a lot of current draw and a lot of heat management is necessary and uh, not that we can't do it, we can, but it becomes cost prohibitive. We had about four or five people ask, why isn't there a keypad on the door? Honestly, that's kind of old technology, and uh, it's being replaced by new wireless entry. One forum question was, why can't you get the supercharger on the flex fuel engine? Uh, great question, and, and the answer is pretty simple. As we, as an industry, have a hard time reading the amount of alcohol concentration in the fuel. So every time you fill up, that changes. And could we offer the supercharge option? Yeah, I could, but to be able to do that and, and protect the engine from overcharging, I would have to dump a lot of the charge, and it's just not efficient at this moment. We're out of time, but I really wanted to thank everyone from Tundra Talk and Tundra Solutions and the rest of our forums for sharing their questions with us. I think we've answered a lot of them today. And in particular, I really want to thank Mike for coming out and taking time out of his very busy schedule to answer those questions for us. If you do have more questions, feel free to share them on the forums. And I can't promise that we can get Mike back to answer them, but we'll do our best. The Intune phone book can transfer up to 2,500 contacts with up to four phone numbers per contact from your paired cell phone. To bring up your contact list, first press the phone button to the right of the CD slot. You can sort the list by favorites, call history, or all your contacts alphabetically. We're looking at all contacts here. If you want to add a name to your favorites list, Tap the star next to the name and it will highlight. To place a call, all you have to do is find the name in the list. Since the name we want begins with a T, we'll tap the TUV key. Tap the name and then the number you want to reach. To cancel a call, press the end call button or hang up button on the steering wheel. Now we'll press the home button. If you've added the phone to your home screen, you can create speed dial numbers by tapping and holding one of the add a contact boxes. Your contact list will come up. Scroll to the name you want to add and tap it. Then tap the number you want and that contact will appear as a speed dial on your home screen.